Good morning everybody. I would just like to give an update on my mounted orchids and also some of the orchids that I put in transparent containers. And what are the benefits of using those mounted orchids or I mean mounting orchids and also using transparent pots for your orchids. As you could see here, I have a bulbophyllum. This is a bulbophyllum daisy chain. And as you could see, I put it on a plank of a cedar wood with some moss and some bark that were stuck on its roots. So I moved it from a pot and now I'm, I mounted it on a cedar plank. And it, I think it's really going well with this particular setup because I just have a basin of water here wherein I just put in the water and then the water gets sips, sipped in to this plant and then it distributes the water on the moss surrounding the the bulbophyllum. I did this because the bulbophyllum was trying to uh, um, climb out of the pot and I didn't really like it because a lot of the new growths just like those guys back there were not uh, we're just going out of the pot and now they are um, they will be able to cling on this mount uh, perhaps I need to add more moss in that area so it would uh, uh, cling on it and I used a <clears throat> fishing wire line to to mount the uh, the bulbophyllum to this uh, plank so that's how I did it for the bulbophyllum now let's look on through the other guys that I that I um, mounted before so they there they are so that's the uh, yellow bird nodosa brasso uh, lelia cattleya um, so um, there you go so it's it's currently in cur uh, growth mode of its roots so you can see it's trying to cling on the plant and also this guy here which is the um, trichoglottis uh, brachiata uh, variation Filipinensis as you can see there it's growing new roots it's in current uh, growth mode a new growth mode for the roots and just the same way that I I um, water this guy here the bulbophyllum I also just water the bottom part of the plant and it gets absorbed by the plant the plant is very absorbent and it distributes the water all throughout the roots so I really like it the, the way that I could just pour in some water there and it would be good for two or three days so that's nice and then um, here are some of my um, smaller plants here the that one there uh, at the middle this one is a uh, tulumia now it's also in um, growth mode there's a new growth also there at the bottom as you can see there and some new roots here is a, a neophenicia falcata uh, dwarf uh, variety is a chavo and this is another walkeriana in transparent pots so what I like about this one is that I could look under the roots if they're really growing nice as you can see there and um, yeah I will be able to monitor how uh, how healthy the roots are so that's why I like transparent pots um, compared to for example uh, the opaque or just the regular pots so I really, I'm really liking the this way now. Just compared to the, for, for example, to this um, Phalaenopsis here, where when I could see the the roots and the moisture around the roots. So if it's not too moist anymore, I would know, and I would know when to water it. So I don't have to water it like even if I don't have to. So this way, I just have to like take a look in, and if it's dry, and then that's how I water it. Just the same goes for the other Phalaenopsis there. It's so easier now. I don't overwater it anymore, them anymore. So uh, you can see there's a lot of moisture in my tent. And that's because that's how I take care of the small orchids. And um, th there's another one mounted there. That I have to spritz because spritz water on because it, it's clinging on top of it. So I won't be able to, uh, you know, just put it on the tub and water it the way that I did my bulbophyllum. So that's the current humidity inside there. It's quite hot now. Right now it's 84 degrees. Although outside it's actually uh, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. 
but inside this tent it's 84 degrees Fahrenheit just because it's um, near a window and it would cool down several degrees later it would end up like in the 70s at, during the day but during the night it would be around like on the upper 50s and lower lower 60s so that's fine I mean actually it helps out with the uh, the blooming of the Phalaenopsis as you could see there there's another bud on the on the mini Phalaenopsis in the back and of course new flower this on this tetraspis so up there are my like the big oncidiums the, the one that has the sherry baby it's a little bit fading right now but i have the um, pastebali there and a, a papi pendulum a pinocchio and also in a semi or water culture uh, uh hydroponics using um styrofoam and some bark chips so i just filled that with water and it's good to go so yeah so this is something it's moist i don't have really have to water it it takes like more than a week before it dries out so it really works out for me all right so that's pretty much how i water my orchids my small orchids on mounted planks mounted on planks and also on um the transparent pots there's another one here this is a uh hara ella retrocala so this is a miniature miniature um orchid which is on uh on a cork bark but here it's uh sitting in water because it really likes high humidity and um and this is one way of my like lazy way of uh, watering this guy and it's really liking it it's even like growing moss around it so i'm gonna harvest those moss for for to be used on as a topping for my um for my medium for my other orchids okay so that's pretty, pretty much all of my my updates for this uh for my uh unique watering methods um inside my humidity tents um which keeps the um, hydration or the moisture inside uh, above 90 percent uh relative humidity um so yeah let me know if you have um any suggestions or any like techniques on how you grow your orchids uh very interesting ways to, to to do them in your in your home and i would be uh glad to uh hear from you and also if you have videos i would like to watch them too all right happy growing my orchid friends bye bye